If you are thinking about applying for a PhD, then absolutely go for it. It's an amazing opportunity and continuation to your academic career to work on a project of your interest and actually having quite a lot of autonomy over it. However, there are fewer PhD places available compared to the undergraduate places, so therefore it's important to have an outstanding PhD application to really maximize your chances of getting the PhD you want. In this video, I share action tips to help you maximize those chances of getting your desired PhD and I'll be sharing my tips that helped me on my educational journey of getting my PhD at the University of Cambridge studying molecular biology. The only thing I ask in return is please like this video, subscribe to my channel and do drop a, a comment below on what next videos you'd like to see and let's get into the video now. Tip number one, contact supervisors directly. Let's assume that at this stage you have chosen your subject. What I would highly recommend is picking universities that you want to apply for your PhD and basically making a list of potential supervisors. Let's take UK as an example. Let's say you decided to go for, I don't know, Oxford, Cambridge, maybe London universities or any others. What I would highly recommend, and let's take example of maybe molecular biology, is picking those specific departments, going through the lists, and actually seeing what labs or what supervisors research might interest you. What I would then advise is to contact these supervisors directly. It's really important to word that email well, and basically that email should express your interest in joining that particular lab or that supervisor's team and saying why would you be a good student and that you would love to have an informal chat about a potential PhD project in their laboratory or team. So I think it's important to contact different people and see if there are opportunities available, because if you meet them and you would like to work in their team under their supervision, then it might be that they actually help you with your PhD application and they will explain how to apply with the specific university they belong to. And they even might have already some private funding available within their lab or their team. And if they would like to hire you, so they would support you alongside your application process as well. If you want to stay within already your current university after your undergraduate degree, you would have already made so many contacts people who might have lectured you. So just kind of go through those lists and see who research you enjoy. Because even if you want to change the university, then they might recommend similar research people, but in different universities, even across the world. My tip number two, choose a supervisor rather than a project. So let's be honest, unless you are one of these people who like knows exactly what they want to specialize in, even when we finish an, our undergrad and I'm a molecular biologist, we don't really know what we actually want to specialize in. So I think it's so much more important once you do have those meetings with supervisors is actually understand who, who do you think in your opinion is the best fit for your educational journey. So I would say you're looking for a supervisor who will be teaching you the skills that are required to complete your PhD successfully. You want a hands-on supervisor who will care about your project and support you as you go along. If there is a big team, you might not directly work with a supervisor, but instead be passed on onto like a postdoc or like a research associate. So it might not be ideal, but it's something to consider. So I always say that, you know, you don't know what area you might specialize and often in the first year, PhDs don't work, especially if you're a scientist. You want to work in a team that you really enjoy and where you grow uh, as, a, as a PhD student. So it's important to have that team on board rather than caring about a specific project, in my opinion. Obviously go for the project you love and the topic that you're really interested in, but at the same time, make sure that there is a really good fit and you're gonna enjoy being in the team of that supervisor. Tip number three, write an outstanding cover letter. PhD application requires a written personal statement or cover letter. So once you even meet, met with the supervisor, there will be formal routes of applying for a PhD. You might be either applying through a program or directly with the department. So you will have to write an outstanding PhD letter to really catch the attention of the department and really stand out of the competition. 
So that letter should be about one page long. I would recommend not going beyond that. And in that letter, I would suggest having maybe three paragraphs where you outline why you want to be applying for this PhD position, why are you suitable as a person and what experiences you have that will be useful for your PhD and why is it that this particular position interests you. If you're going to write a poorly worded cover letter, that doesn't really represent you well because then the question is, will this particular candidate do well in writing their thesis? So please do ensure that cover letter is written very well. If you want to get in touch and ask any questions about that, that's absolutely fine. I'll probably release a separate video on how to write a cover letter for a PhD, but hopefully this structure and those tips can help you write it now. My tip number four, check your CV for typos. So compared to undergraduate degree, here in the UK there is a requirement to see your CV for a PhD application. So your job is to make sure that there are no typos, no misalignments or anything like that going on with your CV. It's so important to show that you have attention to the detail and rather than saying you have that quality, the way to prove it is to actually have an excellent CV that will include your educational history, your research interests and what you've done so far in the, your specific subject of interest. It's going to include your extracurriculars, maybe hobbies and any publications you might have written so far. Don't worry if you haven't, that's okay. My final tip is number five, prepare for your interview. The interview is normally a final stage for your PhD application. It's important again to prepare so much for it because there will be many standard questions that will be asked from you, such as why are you applying for this PhD? Why this particular supervisor? What academic and research experiences you have so far to show that you will be a resilient PhD candidate? If something does go wrong with your PhD, how do you overcome it, etc., etc. There are standard questions that obviously can vary quite a bit, but there are certain things that you can prepare in advance. For any interview coaching, I always tell my students, try to predict questions that you might be asked, write them on the flashcards and write your answers out so you know what you're gonna say. Provide three reasons what you're gonna answer, why PhD is a suitable, continuation to your career. The trick is, is not to sound over-rehearsed because that will sound over-prepared. So try to sound a little bit natural, but show the excitement for that particular PhD position. And I hope these tips will help you gain PhD of your dreams. So do please drop me a comment below if you have any further questions. Thank you for watching this video. Press the like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.